Hi, it's Bastard John again. I want to do a little bit about uh, photo chucks. How I set work up in the photo chuck, round work and square work. The thing is, your chuck that's on here is quite tight. I was doing some heavy turning with it. Best way to get it off without downs or anything, put a hexy bar, spin the log on, spun on it, fits it, that's all it takes. I've actually seen chucks on that tight where you've had to turn the back plate off to get the chuck off. I'm going to a little, a little bracket, a little tree off. Chuck keys here, and I keys I use my airline, all the stuff I use all the time, as soon as it lying about the bottom of the bed. I try to never, never leave stuff lying on top of the airline, like it's asking to fall off, hit the chuck, and accidents happen. Bed protector, just in case you drop it. The one time you're doing put it on, is the time you're going to drop the chuck. Bastard. Make sure I register the end of the, the spill is nice and clean. I want a couple of four jaw chucks, this is the best one. You need to make sure the threads are the threads are clean. A little bit of oil, I always put a drop of oil on. That's all it takes. It's going to tighten up with your machine anyway. I've got a couple of chuck heads to fit the chuck, a big and a little. In. It's called an independent chuck. There's all the jaws, the four jaws move independently of each other. As opposed to the three jaw self centering chuck. You can get a four jaw self centering chuck as well. What I'll do, I'll take it apart and give it a clean. It should have been clean before it was put away the last time. I like four jaw chucks, they're a lot stronger than three jaw chucks. Obviously, you can hold odd shaped things in them, it's nice and short. If I have a choice between a three jaw and a four jaw chuck, only one chuck, I will choose a four jaw. So once, you, once you get used to setting things up, it doesn't take long at all. Paint brush handy too for cleaning out things. Quite handy for painting things as well. Reasonable. It's WD40. Good for cleaning. You see the chuck's got rings on all of your own. Don't they make it look pretty? That'll help you set things up. Initial setup. We'll blow the crap out of the jaws.
The jaws have got numbers on. The chuck's got numbers on as well, obviously one to four. Number one's always the last one you pick up. Number one, the, the joke can go in the other way around, it can go in that way. If I want something big, I can go in that way, if I want something smaller. You could have two in big, two in small, three, one, you can mix them up any way you want. But you must make sure the jaw one goes into the hole one. It's actually quite an old chuck this, but it's done very little work. Jaws on the chuck are very hard and sharp. If you're putting something in you don't want to mark, a piece of aluminium, if you will scrap aluminium in there, it'll stop it from damaging it. The good way is to put the aluminium in and put a rubber band on to hold it on and stop it falling off, and you're not juggling with four bits of four bits of aluminium. Then you can put it put it on, a wrap of insulating tape, anything to help hold it in place. I found a bit of plate, a bit of metal steel plate, it's got a centre punch mark on it. I want to drill a hole in that centre punch mark. I mean you could just go across the pedestal drill and drill the hole, but I might want to drill a hole and then bore it to a size I haven't got a drill for. I might want the hole perfectly in line with his face, the lathe will do that. So I want to mount that there, obviously with that centre punch mark run parallel to the centre of the lathe. There's an easy way to get it very very near, I'll show you that now. We'll get a job, roughly in the centre. Put your tail stock up, tail stock centre. In the centre pop mark, nice and gently. Try and get the faces square to the jaws. Just snug each one up and turn. That's going to be very near. The clock on to see how near it is. It's a handy little tool here, who made a tool called a wiggle bar. Some people call it a wiggle bar. It's a spring loaded centre. That goes in your centre pop mark. The other end goes in your tail sock centre. You just take a little bit of weight on. I say it's spring loaded so it's held in. What I used to use before I made that, you should just put a spare centre in. Do it that way. Put a clock on there. It's better with a spring loaded one. Right, my spring loaded centre's in. Wiggle bar or whatever you want to. Call it. I've got a clock gauge mounted onto a tool holder on centre height. I use it all the time, it's left in there. The nearer the, the, nearer the chuck it is, the more run out you're going to have. Uh, six, six, seven thou, eight thou, and that's that's before you even adjust it. So eight thou, we're getting near. If you're not using four jaw chuck all the time, 
it's easy when you're adjusting it to get confused, you end up going the wrong way, and it can be a it can be not a nuisance but it can be very very frustrating. I'll show you a way to set up a forge or chuck that I found on the internet. I couldn't believe it when I first saw it. Uh, I've started using it, I've practiced it, and it really it really is effective. I mean for someone for somebody that's using a forge or chuck all the time at work, it's it's second nature. They, just, they do it. It's incredible how quick they can get it right. But for people who are just messing about at home, this method works. Right, I've adjusted the workpiece so it's actually running out of true. Make sure you've got plenty of travel on your on your clock gauge. Right, what you do is turn it to the lowest point. Which is there. You set your zero to the lowest point. Then you turn it to the highest point. That's 37 thou. Half of 37 thou is 15, say 18 thou. So you turn it back to 18. You set your zero. You turn it forward to the next jaw, which is that one. Two chuck keys make it easy. I made a chuck key out of the video, made a chuck key the other week. You tighten it, you always tighten. So that gets back to zero. Which is there. Turn it forward to the next jaw. And straight away, you're within three thou. That's your high point there. And you've got one. High point there. That's within half a thou. You could you could possibly get it better, but for what we're doing, you don't need any better than that. You could spend you could spend about ten minutes with that and make it worse. I mean that's taking less than a minute. I'll knock it out with truth again and do it again for you. Right, we've really got some going now. So you find your lowest point, there, zero your clock, to your highest point, it's 55 thou, that'll be 22 and a half, back, 22 and a half, zero your clock. Next jaw round, which is that one, jaw's level with a better than eight. Back to zero. Next jaw round. To zero. Next one. Within half a thou. Quick, effective. It does work. So that's that's centre in the centre punch mark or a uh, centre drill mark. Bar's obviously bent, but it makes no difference because the the bar's not rotating. The bar's stopping still. Spring loaded bar. Uh, what I'll do, I'll put a bit. Of, I'll put something round in, and I'll show you how I set that up. Right, I put a bit of round bar in. It's running out of true. About 40 thought of true. So you turn it round to you fetch it, find your low spot. Low spot's there. Zero the clock. Turn it forward to find your high spot. There, it's about 41 thou. 
half a 41 is 20 and a half if you turn it back 20 and a half we zero your clock Four again to the next jaw round, which is that one. Set that level of the lathe bed. <coughs> Using your two chuck keys again. Adjust it to zero, you always tighten. Turn it to the next jaw round. That's within a throw. I'll do it again. Knock it out, hold the square a bit. A bit more than that. Bloody hell, I want the bastard to move the square, man. That's better. Right, so we'll turn it to find one lower point. That's your lowest point there. Zero the clock. Turn to find the high point. 42 thou. Turn it back to half, which is 21. Zero your clock at that. Turn it to the next jaw round, which is that one. Two chuck keys again. Adjust it to zero. It's easy with two keys, or easier. Now to the next jaw. Zero. It's fine if you're using a four jaw chuck all the time, but you're using it now and then this way it really works. Like I say, it's not my idea. I, I, I saw a guy on YouTube do it uh, a few weeks ago. Now, since then, I've been practicing it and I do it that way now. It does save a lot of time. I hope you found that useful. It, uh, it is a quick and, quick and easy way of setting things up with a four jaw chuck. You find the more you use a four jaw chuck, the more you like it. I use a lot. Uh, like I say, you can get a much stronger hole in a four jaw chuck. You can take something out. Uh, sorry, you can, you can have something that's got to be set up true. You can get it run true in a four jaw chuck. Three jaw chucks are all right as long as you leave it in the chuck. Once you take it out, you kind of get it back in the same. It's a shame because you often find four jaw chucks that lie in the bottom of the cupboard and the lid rusting away. People don't use them. If you buy a, buy a second hand lathe, you often find the four jaw chuck is absolutely mint. This one was, it's never been used. Which is a great shame really. See, if I had a choice of chucks, only one chuck, I would have a four jaw chuck. Without a doubt. I'm going to play a clip at the end of this video, uh, where we had a bit of a mishap on the lathe. Be warned, the language is pretty long. Not ridiculous, but it is fairly strong. Uh, people seem to enjoy. Seeing what goes wrong, uh, it's not all plain sailing. The idea is to have a, have a laugh, have a bit of fun, you know. But you've got to respect the safety side of things. Uh, be careful what you're doing, be safe. Where eye protection. I think eye protection is probably the most important thing, common sense, but eye protection. If you're a clumsy bastard, eye protection, at least you can still see and watch yourself being clumsy. If you've got no fingers, you can still see. Right, we're through now, but dispense with the drill chuck, start with a more tape right here. And a three quarter inch drill here. Back here, plenty of torque. Nice and slow. Bollocks, you fucking whore! Ah, ah. Bastard thing. <laughs>